Right now I'm going to show you how to use multi-part cues to do some discrete timing on the EOS. Now what a multi-part cue allows you to do is break up a finished cue into multiple parts. Now the benefit of doing this, uh, instead of using, say, discrete timing on a category or attribute basis, is that each part gets its own line in the cue list. So you can organize your timing and you can see a lot more information glancing at your cue list. But essentially the end result may be exactly the same. So let's take a look at an example of this. Right now I have a couple of cues up on stage and I'm going to be going from my cue number two into cue number three and everything is just going to go in its default five second time but we have a lot of things happening so let's take a look at that. We have movement, we have color, there are some fades, quite a bit of information is happening. What I would like to do now is address the request of a designer to have some of the lights, the lights that are, that are shining my gobos, their MAC 2 caves, to hold their position snap the gobo and then move after they've done maybe a delay for two seconds to move into their new position. So in this queue, what I want to do to break those lights into their own very their very own part is first select the lights. This is my group 15 or the Mac 2Ks. And now I just say record and because I'm in queue 3 already, part 2, enter. And now what's going to happen is I have a second part. Now one thing to remember is that anything I don't specifically move into its own part gets left in a part one, which is the holding part of this queue. So everything, because I specified my Mac 2 case, they're the only fixtures that got moved into part two. Everything else stayed in part one. And all the timing carries through. So if I ran this queue without making any changes, it would look exactly the same. But now I have the ability to go in and change some of these timing parameters and see what it looks like right on the queue list. So let's first address the focus issue. What I want to do is hold the lights in position until after the gobo has snapped. So what I want to do is take this cue, Q3, part two, and I just want to take the focus of that and give it a delay of two seconds. And now we can see that part two has the delay of two seconds. Part one, no delay at all. It's just right there in part number two. Then what I want to do is tell the lights to snap their gobos. And the, because I know that gobos are part of the beam category, I can just apply a zero time to the beam category as a whole. So it's the same way, and because I'm in this queue, I could just say part two beam times zero. And now we can see at a glance what's happening in the timing. So now if I run this queue back up into queue number two, we'll see that we have the zero time, the delay, and then the move. Now my Mac 700s, their motion is occurring in part number one. It's very easy to move fixtures and channels between the parts, uh, and I can do that in blind. So what I want to do for this example, maybe I want the Max to also do the same delay in the focus. If I go into blind, I simply have to specify the channels that I want to move, and then select the part that I want to move them to and press enter. So in this case, I want my Mac 700s, or my group five, in part two, enter. And now I have moved them into part two. Nothing else changes except when, you know, what part they're contained in. Now, I will see the gobo snap, and then all of my motion has the two second delay applied to it. And that is how you would use part cues on the EOS to do some discrete timing.